In today's video, I want to take a look at WordPress alternatives. So I wanted to look at the top 10 and I think there's quite a lot to say here. So I'm going to break this up into two videos. I'll do five today and five in the next one. Now I will be a bit biased towards WordPress because that's my favorite and that's the one we use the most on this channel. But uh, the five that are most used other than WordPress, WordPress has 43% of the web. But um, beyond that, there's Shopify with 4% of the web, Wix with 25 Squarespace with 2%, and uh, Joomla with 1.8, and Drupal with just more than 1%. So I'm going to look at those five today, and we'll look at another five next time. So let's get started. All right, let's start with the big one, Shopify. This is a really big player in e-commerce websites. It's the most popular US e-commerce platform. So that's a massive market. Uh, just bear in mind that worldwide, there's much more WooCommerce stores than there are Shopify stores. 8.9% of the web are WooCommerce and 4% are Shopify. So uh, worldwide, uh, WooCommerce is much more popular, but I think that US market probably means that Shopify is doing uh, more revenue overall than WooCommerce at this point. And it is marketed as being a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more non-technical than WordPress. I think that's fair, but I do think WordPress page builders like Elementor, Divi, uh, Brizzy, those have come a long way uh, to making the user experience quite similar. I'll show you what I mean. The Shopify page builder is actually pretty similar to a WordPress page builder, as we can see. Now, the main disadvantage of Shopify is it's closed source compared to being open source with WordPress. So with the closed source add-ons, they're going to charge you separately for plugins. Usually there's not a lot of free plugins with Shopify. With WordPress, you get loads of free plugins and you can do a lot of stuff uh, without spending money. Shopify, you quickly notice that your billing is going to increase if you want to add certain features to your shop. And also being closed source, you're locked into hosting it on Shopify with a WooCommerce site. You can move it onto any server that you feel like basically. So uh, a lot less flexibility with Shopify, but it's still a good platform. Um, I think what they're aiming for is really for non-technical users. If you've got an existing business or a niche online store that does a lot of online trade, maybe you've been using eBay or Etsy and you're ready to have an independent website on the side of that as well. Or maybe you've got a, an existing business and you find you're doing a lot of orders by email, a lot of orders over the phone. You want to automate some of that process, adding Shopify, um, that can be the right choice in those kind of use cases. But don't just limit yourself to Shopify. Check out Big Cartel, check out Equid. There might be some a few others around that will actually serve what you need. So don't limit yourself. There's other good choices as well. I've looked at Big Cartel and Equid on the channel as well. So uh, make sure you do your research first. It's worth noting that Big Cartel and Equid actually have free plans. Also, uh, WooCommerce, you can find free WordPress hosting if you want to test it out. Um, those are things that you don't really get with Shopify. Um, Shopify, you do get, I think, a free month trial, but 39 a month is where you start at. So that can be a little bit daunting. There's always cheaper web hosting um, than 39 a month if you actually are budget limited. So just uh, keep the pricing in mind as well. All right, now let's look at Wix and Squarespace. I did group these two together because they are quite similar products aiming at a similar uh, section of the market as simple uh, do-it-yourself page builders where someone has a fairly low budget, but they want a nice looking website that they can DIY um, with a simple interface. So um, I actually have tried the Wix builder a little bit more than the Squarespace builder. I do think the Wix one is a little bit friendlier, a little bit more like using graphic software um, in terms of its experience. I'll show you what I mean. The Wix builder is definitely a bit more drag and drop, a bit more friendly um, compared to the others, I think. And in comparison, Squarespace's page builder is pretty similar to most other page builders that I've tried. It's not noticeably any nicer than, than others, I think. Wix definitely has a definite edge in this category. I'll show you the Squarespace experience right now. I'd say the Squarespace editor is probably somewhere between Wix and Elementor, a little bit easier than Elementor, but not as good as Wix. So the idea here is most people with basic computer skills can succeed in getting a decent looking web page put together by themselves without any professional assistance. So, um, but I think for a static brochure type website, you can actually get a similar result just by using Google Sites. So if you're not aware, I've done a tutorial on Google Sites, I'll put that in the description, but you can get a, quite a nice um, static website from Google Sites for free. You can use a custom domain name on your Google site as well. So. You can definitely save a few dollars if you have only fairly simple needs. Um, I've covered that before. And um, you can add e-commerce for uh, a little bit of extra on Wix and Squarespace. I've shown a couple of ways you can actually add e-commerce to Google sites as well. So uh, there's definitely free options that do a similar thing to these products, but uh, 
again, if someone enjoys using Wix and they like the experience, I don't uh, have any problem with that. I think it definitely has its own market. My wife likes using it, for example, and she's doing quite well with her online business on Wix, but yeah, it's not what I'd use personally. Um, so yeah, I think Wix is slightly better value overall than Squarespace. But again, I think both of these are a bit overpriced compared to what you can get with a WordPress site on good value WordPress hosting. Um, definitely WordPress is uh, the better one in uh, my opinion. So again, both of these are closed source compared to WordPress. So both of these cases, when you build with Wix, you have to stick with Wix. You build with Squarespace, you have to stick with Squarespace. If you want to move somewhere else, you've got to build the site completely again. So I'd definitely say that lock-in factor is a serious deal breaker in terms of me being able to recommend it, but definitely does have its use cases. In, in terms of trying these out, Squarespace, I think, has a free trial. Wix actually has a free plan. So Wix, you can really get uh, familiar with the Wix page builder on that free plan. I think it's got some branding and ads on the free plan, but uh, definitely check it out if you're interested. All right, now let's talk about Joomla. Joomla is probably the closest thing to WordPress on this list. It is free and open source, same as WordPress, and it has a default editor, pretty similar to WordPress. And you can also add uh, page builders these days for our Elementor style experience as well. I'll show you what I mean. The Joomla page builder is actually pretty similar to Elementor in terms of its interface now. Joomla is probably a little bit more flexible than WordPress, but it does come at the price of higher complexity. I'd say this one is more developer level than WordPress. Um, you can definitely do some more custom templating in the default Joomla setup. So uh, you do have that more flexibility. Uh, uh, the downside is that the, the community is much smaller than WordPress. So you do have a smaller extension library, uh, smaller theme, less support, and um, as a result, if you actually have to get professional uh, developer to work on your site compared to WordPress, you can find a WordPress developer reasonably affordably, but Joomla um, developers will charge probably uh, significantly more than WordPress just because there's there's less people who do Joomla. Um, you do get more advanced user management. So this is going to suit larger organizations where you've got many users who need to be able to access the content management system. So I'd recommend this for um, developers and organizations who have their own developer or development team on board because, yeah, you really need to know what you're doing uh, with Joomla. It's not something I'd recommend to someone who's just doing this as a hobby or someone who just needs a, a website for their own needs. I'd probably recommend WordPress in those situations. But if you are um, looking to be a professional or you're looking to be a tech enthusiast and you want to try everything out, um, this is probably one worth adding to your resume. And finally, we've got Drupal. Drupal is also available free and open source. Uh, it is much more advanced than any of the others I've mentioned on here. This has a, a very advanced user management system, which makes it suitable for very large organizations and government departments. You see this um, used quite often in uh, government departments. It does have more flexibility and higher complexity than anything else I've mentioned here, um, but you do get more customizability and they do have a very high focus on security because of uh, a lot of the government projects that it's used on. So this is definitely worth uh, adding to your resume if you are looking to do web development. So again, a smaller plugin, smaller theme library, smaller community than WordPress by a long way. But again, Drupal developers can charge more money than WordPress developers just because the scale of the projects that are available and the, the market is just not as many Drupal developers as WordPress developers. So it can be worth learning that skill set if that's what you're interested in. Um, I'd recommend this for large organizations with their own developer support. In terms of the user experience with Drupal, as the developer, you're looking to set up templates for the users to enter their content into. It's not really a page builder type experience like you can get through any of these other options here with Drupal. You set up templates and then the users enter their content into the forms and it keeps everything nice and uniform. It's great for like very large websites with tons of content where you need to keep everything well managed. I'll show you what I mean. Drupal is about keeping everything templated, entering the content using forms. So that wraps up Drupal. I think that's definitely one worth checking out if you really want to stretch your skill set a little bit more. So let's head over to our conclusions. All right, for our conclusion, I think the first point I want to get across is that if WordPress is working okay for you and you're satisfied with what it's giving you, there's really no reason to switch. None of these things that I've mentioned in the video is going to kill WordPress. WordPress is definitely going to be uh, hanging around for the foreseeable future. Um, they do have niche advantages in some cases. Um, so, but yeah, none of them kill WordPress. I think WordPress is really great all round. You can solve most web design uh, projects with WordPress at the end of the day. Um, Shopify is likely to be the better choice in some e-commerce situations. It is a 
probably a slightly better user experience for less technical users. At the end of the day, if that business has to be using the interface uh, constantly, uh, Shopify may be preferable than WooCommerce. Um, Drupal and Joomla may give you some additional career opportunities in large organizations. So if you want to improve your resume, employ, improve your employability, um, go and check out uh, Joomla and Drupal. Add those to your resume alongside WordPress. It might help you um, on your career. And finally, Wix and Squarespace, those are consumer grade. Um, I'd seldomly recommend them, but um, check if a free option might actually uh, do the job for you. If you are seriously looking at Wix or Squarespace, check out something like Google Sites, Big Cartel, Equid, um, you can often get a pretty good result for free using something else if you're planning on signing up for Wix or Squarespace. So make sure you do your homework. I think Wix, Squarespace, Shopify probably got to where they are through very good influencer marketing rather than necessarily being the best product in town or the best product for your particular use case. So make sure you check out the alternatives. That's probably my main advice. And if you were to learn anything out of here, I would learn WordPress, honestly. Um, I'm obviously biased, but yeah, I do think WordPress is probably the most versatile and cost-effective option here. So um, I'm going to come back with another video where I check out five other um, systems as well. So stay tuned for that one, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.